Well, 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 another episode of Monday Night Raw is done. This was... This was a tape show, as we know. This was from London, England. It was the go-home show to Money in the Bank. Are you excited about Money in the Bank after tonight? Because I sure as hell am not still. Even though, you know, Money in the Bank, just like the Royal Rumble, just like WrestleMania, just like SummerSlam, and usually Survivor Series sell themselves just based on their concept of what they are, like Survivor Series being... Survivor Series matches, you have the Royal Rumble with the Royal Rumble match, WrestleMania being the grandest stage of them all, and SummerSlam being the biggest party of the summer, and Money in the Bank with its Money in the Bank ladder matches. This show just, mm, there's nothing good on it except for like two things. The Firefly Funhouse segment, which took a really, really dark turn in a good way, and Rey Mysterio vs. Cesaro. Everything else on this show was just blah. We had Braun Strowman. In the main event, it was supposed to be Braun Strowman versus Drew McIntyre. That match did not happen as Sami Zayn was in the office of Shane McMahon earlier in the night and was complaining about what happened the week before. So Shane McMahon was, well, Shane, no, I'm sorry, not Shane. Um, Sami Zayn said he was going, like, he was going to get Braun Strowman's spot for no reason other than just to get it because of what happened last week. Shane's like, no, I can't do that. And Sammy said, well, I'll fight him for it, make it a no disqualify, a, a false count anyway match, and that'll be good. And that match happened, and that's what we got. My question to you is, why was Braun Strowman even advertised for the Money in the Bank pay per view? This is Royal Rumble all over again. The difference is only a week. For that, you had about two, three weeks, was it, to, um, Switched out Braun Strowman and Finn Balor. This time you only have six days. Why have Braun Strowman in that match? I know Vince McMahon is punishing him over and over because it looked like we were going to have Samoa Joe versus Braun Strowman in the United States Championship match. But because of what happened at WrestleMania and the fact that Braun Strowman flubbed his spot were in that in the what people call the armbar, the Andre the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, he when Luke Harper was suplexing or holding. Um, Mustafa Ali up for a suplex, Braun Strowman was supposed to kick him the first time, but he, he missed that spot for whatever reason, decided to do something else, and then hit his spot later. Is this still punishment for that? Because it kind of feels like that's, this is still punishment for that. Um, we had Miz TV with Roman Reigns, so again, Roman Reigns is going to be on Monday Night Raw. And for the second show in a row, on for main Raw, so they did it on SmackDown, and they did it this night on Raw. WWE aired a video package for Roman Reigns depicting his entire career. It's like the this guy's retiring or coming back from coming back not I know he did back in February, but coming back from a big illness or a big injury or it's like a career threatening in, in illness or injury yesterday. This, like I said on Tuesday last week, this video package they show tonight should have aired the night he came back. And the fact that WWE, when you go and watch that video package, they're only showing the positive things. Him winning the Royal Rumble. Him winning at the Wrestle, at WrestleMania 34, um, 32. Winning at WrestleMania 33. Winning at WrestleMania 34. Doesn't show 31 or 35. Winning the Universal Championship at SummerSlam. And each and every one of these video packages that they show when he wins the Rumble, they conveniently show video still, or like video of fans cheering and going crazy. He wins, the, he beats The Undertaker. They show guys in the crowd going, oh my god, like shaking up and down, like, oh my god, what a big accomplishment. When everybody fucking knows he got his ass booed out of the building when he fights Triple H two years, uh, the year, was it the year prior? The year prior, yeah. No, two years prior, right? At WrestleMania 32. They had, like, these fans, like, going completely ballistic for a guy winning the WWE Championship when everybody, you can find videos on fucking YouTube of reactions of Roman Reigns entering that match and winning that match. And people booed the fucking hell out of him. Yet they have video footage of people cheering him conveniently. Bullshit. Don't let WWE manipulate you into, like, thinking this guy has been beloved his entire career. Because, quite honestly, he has not been. It is okay to boo Roman. It is okay to boo Roman Reigns when 
WWE is not helping themselves. The superstar, this wild card rule, and the fact that Roman Reigns is going to be using it again as he did tonight, which he's not going to be on SmackDown tomorrow because he, because they're on the European tour and he's going to be on the Ross, the Raw end because they had these European tours set up before the superstar shakeup, and that's why he's on here. I'm sure AJ Styles will probably be on the European tour for the SmackDown brand after tonight. They'll probably be back on SmackDown tomorrow again and continue on whatever they have left. By the way, these are the go-home shows again for Mon- for Money in the Bank, which when you have a tape show going into a pay-per-view like Devin McMahon SmackDown do this week, definitely not good for that pay-per-view. We have Miz TV with the Miz on the ring for another edition of Miz TV, which... We see what happened that led to the Steel K match between Miz and Shane McMahon at Sunday's Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Out comes the Miz. Um, the music stops and fans pop for Miz. Miz welcomes us to the international edition of Miz TV. Then he plugs the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And the two briefcase matches, the Universal Championship, Kofi Kingston. And then he says he can't talk about Money in the Bank without talking about his opponent, Shane. Miz briefly mentions the Steel Cage match on Sunday before he says... That I want to talk about me, but let's talk about my guest, and let's bring out Roman Reigns. Cole says Reigns is appearing on Raw tonight, thanks to the Vince McMahon's new wildcard rule, which as we see, as I said on Monday last week, and as I said on Tuesday last week as well, this wildcard rule is not going to do well in the end. And if you have, when we get back to our regularly scheduled in the States shows next week, if we see Roman on Raw and SmackDown every single week, it's going to get worse for Roman Reigns. You think people, there are people booing, and there were, I could hear boos in the crowd in London tonight. They didn't, it wasn't as bad as it was a year ago, so that's why they probably left them alone. But as we get further and further along this year, by the time, I'm telling you, by the time SummerSlam comes around, Roman Reigns is going to be one of the most hated guys in the company again. It is okay to boo Roman. You're not booing the cancer survivor. You're not booing the cancer survivor. You're booing Roman Reigns. Roman didn't beat cancer. Roman didn't put cancer into remission, which, by the way, Roman Reigns has been in remission since probably November. The fact that WWE wants to make it seem like he was gone for four months and was battling leukemia, the guy probably was um, in remission not even a month after he left. He was off with his Hobbs and Shaw's commitments, his TV commitments, all that shit. WWE just put it up to, like, oh, this guy was battling cancer the entire time he was gone. Give me a fucking break. The guy's been on his um, pill, his pill that keeps him keeps leukemia in remission for months. It's not like he took. It's not like he was like looking far and wide for for a way to put leukemia in remission. This dude's been on these pills on, on this pill for months, and he's been in remission for months before he came back. WWE needs to stop lying to the fans, but it's WWE. Cole says, um, let's see, Reigns brings up Elias and some fans chant for him. Reigns says Elias hasn't accomplished anything since he's been in WWE, because quite honestly, he hasn't. They should have gave him, and as, we, as people have said, when they had that mini feud between Seth Rollins and Elias last year, which was one match, and then the next night, Seth Rollins lost the Intercontinental title, I believe they missed the boat on Elias. Elias should have walked out of that pay-per-view, which was money in, I believe it was last year's Money in the Bank. He should have walked out as your Intercontinental Champion, or at least with the fact that Seth Rollins cheated to win by holding the tights, I believe they should have at least built that up to uh, back uh, Extreme Rules, and instead of Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins, we should have got an Elias versus Seth Rollins, whatever match they wanted to do. Miz proposes he and Reigns get together for a buddy cop movie, which um, Reigns asked Miz, what Miz is doing because they had a good thing going here until Miz brought that up. Miz said, Roman, Rain says Miz sounds like the old Miz and he wanted to punch that Miz in the face. Rain says he came to hang out with the new Miz, the one who stood up to the McMahons last week. Rain shows us a replay of what happened with Shane attacking Roman, Shane and Elias attacking Roman during the um, Drew McIntyre match with, with Roman Reigns last week with the Miz running off, chasing off, off Shane McMahon and beating him with a Later on, a little bit later. Elias, um, Bane shows a replay of him. He, has, he also says, sees the Miz being on the staircase. Miz gets fired up and cuts a promo on how Shane will be nowhere to run on Sunday and his family can't save him. Out comes Shane to fans' booze. 
Kane says it is flattering that they're out here talking about him, but they need to remember that he is their boss. He informs Miz that that, that Miz TV is over. Elias, and he says, as soon as he says that, Bobby Lashley and Elias attack from behind, laying Reigns and Miz out as the fans boo. Shane, Elias, and Lashley stand together on the ramp as Reigns and Miz try to cover. Shane, of course, what do you expect from this? You have Miz and Roman Reigns in the middle of the ring who just got laid out by two heels. It's time for a tag team match, player. Then we get some, some kind of creativity here. We don't need to see. Oh, we'll have... Team, these two, these two heels beat up, beat up the uh, attack. These two baby faces. Let's have a tag team match. It just happens over and over and over and over and over again. This is just like two weeks ago, or last week, whichever one it was, over two weeks ago, when Alexa Bliss named named the men's Money in the Bank ladder match participants at the time. We went from two t- two two heels and two faces talking to each other, um, throwing bubs at each other. To let's have a tag team match. Enough of it. Enough of it. And of course, we got the obligatory Miz and, the, and Roman Reigns versus Elias and Bobby Lashley. This match lasts about a few minutes until out come, well, Shane was at, at ringside. Shane pulls Reigns off the apron and throws him into the ring, per, ring, ring stairs for a disqualification. So Roman and the Miz are your winners. After the bell, Shane sends Miz Reigns into the steel ring steps as Miz looks on, still crawling to the corner. Shane, Elias, and Lashley triple team Miz and Reigns now. They take Miz back to the floor and triple team him until Reigns comes flying off and takes all three heels down at once for a big pop. Shane tackles Reigns and works him over. Shane brings Reigns back into the ring, but but Reigns tackles him. Elias and Lashley make the save again. Reigns gets triple team now. Miz brings in a steel chair to make the save. Reigns with a Superman punch to Elias and Lashley. Miz raises the chair and pulls it with Reigns as Reigns' music hits. Shane, Elias, and Lashley look on from the stage. Ah, oh, so boring. Absolutely so goddamn boring. It's the same shit, different week, and it's kind of getting absolutely just boring. They did advertise Braun Strowman vs. Drew McIntyre, also a women's double contract setting for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, as Becky Lynch will be taking on Lacey Evans and Charlotte Flair at, 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 at Money in the Bank. Speaking of Becky Lynch, this was before we get on to anything else on Monday Night Raw. Last night, Edge, I, I, I don't know what happened on Twitter immediately, but like Becky Lynch, oh, they went, they were at a pay per view, uh, not a pay per view, but a house show. Well, I guess Becky Lynch and the and Beth Phoenix, who was on the U, is on the European tour with the Raw brand, were in a tag team match, and Becky had a, like Beth raised Becky's hands in because they were celebrating, and Becky put out a. We to like trying to this tweet and say just keep your hands close like keep your hands oh, like don't get too close to the championship. One thing led to another. Edge was brought into this. Becky said something about that. Beth said to Edge um, to Becky, "Are we bringing our, um, our men into this now?" Becky broke the internet by saying, "I'll ask him at w- at Seth Rollins WWE." Coming in this morning on to Twitter, you see. Seth Rollins say, so I guess I can post this now on, and it's a link to his Instagram account, where he posted a picture of him kissing Becky right after he won the Universal Championship, confirming what everyone kind of fucking knew by now, that him and her were a couple. WWE kind of hinted at that at the Hall of Fame when you would actually sit there and watch, and it was when Bret Hart and Natalya were coming out to do the whole introduction, induction for the Hart Foundation. Becky and Seth were sitting beside each other, but they both stand up and were clapping with the glasses on, and it was just those two in the shot. So it was kind of just that. But to everybody, to anybody who is a fan, any of the guys who are Becky, like Becky um, uh, fan boys who want to sit there and try and like dream about dating Becky, you never had a chance. All the Seth Rollins fangirls who are probably jealous of Becky Lynch, you never had a chance. Go find your own Seth Rollins or your own Becky Lynch. Let's just leave it at that. Congratulations to those two, and I hope everything works out for them. Just moving on here. <sighs> they announced the leaders to a lengthy video package for Seth Rollins and AJ Styles at Money in the Bank. We hear from them later in interviews. They also show us what happened with Braun Strowman dumping Sami Zayn in the trash can last week. Kelly Cruz stops Braun now and asks if he regrets what happened because critics say he could have seriously hurt Sammy. 
Yeah, and the fact that Sami Zayn showed up on SmackDown Live with not a scratch, not a banana, not a piece of toilet paper, nothing. They only referenced it because, oh man, Sami, you smell. Like, they could have had something. They could have had something with them. They could have had maybe a couple scuffs on him or something. Maybe he had his um, jacket torn or something. But no. Ron only regrets the trash compactor not turning Sami into a cube. Ron goes on to remind us he won Money in the Bank last year. Please don't remind us how fucked up that went. He says, nothing can stop him from becoming Monster in the Bank for a second year in a row. As the staff, staffer walks, back, walks up and informs Ron, it's like, Ron, um, Ron Strowman to the principal's office. Ron Strowman to the principal's office. That's just how this felt. The Shane's office wants to see him, and we go to commercial. Back from break, and Sammy is in the Shane's office ranting about how the toxic environment of WWE fans are why the superstars are acting up. Why Braun Strowman almost killed him last week. Braun walks in, and, they, and he's like, so this is why I'm brought, sent to the principal, I'm um, called to the principal's office. Sammy says Shane was just about to give him Braun Strowman's money in the bank spot. Shane says he can't just give it to Sammy, and Sammy says he will fight for it. Sammy suggests a stipulation and makes it a... a Says, why not a false count in a win match? I'll beat him. I'll face him in a false count in a win match. Shane makes the match. Braun says he's going to eat Sammy alive and walks off. Shane, Shane congratulates Sammy on getting the match. Mojo Raleigh versus Apollo Crews. Now, granted, we've seen, we know, who, before the show went on the air, we knew two of the four for the um, wild card rule for Monday Night Raw. You had... Charlotte Flair, who's going to be for the double contract signing, and Roman Reigns, who are going to be the other two. Mojo Rally is on Monday Night Raw. The brother Apollo Cruz over, who's probably on the European tour for the Raw brand, does not mean he has to be on Monday Night Raw. We wasted a wild card rule um, spot for Mojo Rally to squash Apollo Cruz. Really? Really? You had Apollo Crews waste a wild card spot rule, a wild card rule spot for Mo, to be to get squashed by Mojo Valley. Really? There was nothing else. There was nothing better else you could do. I'm sure Finn Balor's on the um, Raw brand, isn't he? On the Raw tour because of the superstar thing, isn't he? I mean, Samoa Joe's on SmackDown side for the um, um, European tour because he wasn't here tonight. They had a video pack. They had a, you know, one of those selfie pictures, that, one of those selfie camera things that they do. This match lasted about two minutes. Apollo Crews did look like he injured his knee. Left checks on Apollo as Mojo waits. Apollo says, was, says he's able to go. Mo, Mo, Apollo gets up and Mojo immediately takes his knee out. Mojo gets up and knocks Apollo to his face. Mojo rock, knock, rocks Apollo and drives in the mat with, with a pin and the win. Yay. How's that wild card rule working out for you? This, and by the way, this match is unopposed, this, this show is unopposed to any NBA playoffs. I don't know about the NHL playoffs if they're going on today, but the NHL playoffs are really not as big as the NBA playoffs to most people. I'm pretty sure this, this show is probably still going to tank. I'm just saying. So the guy in the world was pretty forward, but Alexa Bliss is backstage on the phone, ranting about her luggage issues, blaming them on the royal baby being born. Okay? Bliss tells the person her ring gear was in that luggage, so they better find it. All of a sudden, Nikki Cross walks up, and she is just not her crazy, out-of-touch, out-of-spoken word, like going maniacally crazy self. She's soft-spoken. It looks like Bliss has a new friend in Cross. Frost says Bliss can vent to her. He will listen. Bliss doesn't want to go back out there and she get laughed out by fans. Mention, Cross mentions that the man should find a replacement for Bliss in the Fatal 4-Way. Bliss turns this into Cross volunteering. Bliss says she will go tell the McMahon that she is a replacement now. Bliss walks off and Cross smiles. Problem apparently solved. So, what is going on with Nikki Cross? She comes in to this scene. This is the first time we've seen Nikki Cross in months. She has been the last... Okay, we haven't seen Nikki Cross... On TV, outside of the, Andre, the the women's battle royal, which does not count because that's just every woman for every woman under the sun, but for meaningful TV, the last time I believe we saw Nikki Cross was a qualifying match for the women's tag team title elimination chamber match 
where it was Bailey and Sasha Banks, the Boston Hug Connection versus Nikki Cross and Alicia Fox. I believe that's the last time we saw her. And they ended up losing her and, her and Alicia Fox. So, what the fuck are they doing with her? I don't know. She, when she's in the match later on, she's like, she's just normal Nikki Cross. So, I don't know where this is leading to, what is going on with this. But, in this section, this scene right here, Nikki Cross was just, just different. It was weird. Back from break, Cole's in the ring for tonight's double contract signing. He hands up Money in the Bank pay-per-view and first brings out Lacey Evans, who challenged the Raw SmackDown Women's Champion for the Red Band title, and then she brings out he brings out Charlotte Flair, who is here because of the wild card rule. Cole introduces the champ, and out she comes to a big pop. Cole asks Becky a question about her opponents for the fans and to up with a Becky two belts. Cole did say, you do realize you probably bit off more than you could chew. Becky says she doesn't care about what kind of beating she was, has coming for her on Sunday. Becky says Flair but keeps going, but Flair interrupts her and taunts her. Flair says Becky now has herself in a situation she can't win. Evans agrees with Flair and gives her props for her dressing appropriately for a contract signing. By the way, Lacey Evans, shut the fuck up. I can't stand this woman already. Her voice sounds so fucking robotic and fake. Everything that comes out of her goddamn mouth just sounds so fake. I don't know what I don't know what they had to do to change the dial in her voice. Honestly, if you look at if you would just go from this perspective from Becky's side of the table and just pan back, erase Becky from the erase Becky from the picture for a second, and just look at Lacey Evans and Charlotte Flair. Literally, the only difference between these two two differences: one's wearing a hat. And one doesn't sound like a fucking robot most of the time when she's cutting a promo. That's the sad part. They both, and if anybody wonders what's wrong with this picture, with this whole thing, and the fact that the women, the women's evolution is just, it's, it's whatever they want to be. It's, it, the agenda is we like our big, big, big breasted blondes. And outside of one Champion like two championship matches this year on a SmackDown brand. Outside of Oscar versus Naomi Tuesday after TLC and Becky versus um, Oscar at Royal Rumble, every single women's championship match from since the brand split at least has had one at least one blonde haired um, woman in it. That is pathetic. Ugh. Evans agrees with Flair's. Becky goes on about Flair being under pressure and not delivering. Becky says Evans can't afford to lose her first title match and Flair can't, lose to, can't afford to lose her million. Becky says she's not the only one in the present as she signs her contracts and the Becky T-Bird sent. Continue. Flair warns Becky that this will all come crashing down on Becky one day. Flair says not, not even these titles can hide Becky's jealous, 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 jealous and insecurities. Flair says all Becky will, do, will be able to blame is her stubborn pride when she bows down to queen to the queen on Sunday. Flair goes on the what gets the what treatment and now more Becky two belts. Evans goes on about how the WWE Universe deserves a proper lady to set an example. Evans says it's time to get rid of the nasties and restore class to the Raw Women's Title, which by the way that class has never been there. Evans says there's no way Becky can be, take down two ladies like Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans. Becky says, there's Evans to swing now. She Evans signs a contract. Flair also signs. Flair tells Evans to show Becky that woman's right. The trash talking continues. As Lacey Evans says, I don't want to get this dress dirty, like this dress a mess or whatever. And Becky says she would, she'll, she'll beat the hell out of him right now. Until a brawl breaks out and Becky tries to, tries to apply the disarmor to Evans, but Flair makes the save with a big boot to the fan as the fans boo. Fans... Fans chant for Becky as she gets double team. Evans assists as Flair lifts Lynch up for a power bomb. They drive Lynch through a table and leave her lane to some more booze. Flair grabs the blue title, raises it up while Re Evans raises the raw title. Becky is still laid out over the pieces of the table. Flair's music hits as Becky recovers on the mat. Does this mean that Becky Lynch could keep both championships? Usually when a heel or when, when the... Challenger gets this kind of momentum, and then 
you know, holds the championship up before they go to the title, before they get to the title picture, title match, usually means that that champion, the champion retains. Now, there's an interesting thing about um, 2K leaks. A 2K, uh, a, like a document leak that proposed that Becky Lynch is going to be your cover athlete for, M- for WWE 2K20. Now, the question is, with that, if that is true, and say they do the they do the reveal, and Becky Lynch has the Raw title on one arm and the SmackDown title on the other arm, Becky Lynch isn't losing any t- either title, they c- and she can't. Like this is this would be harkening back to what happened last year. AJ Styles was the WWE champion when the stat, when the 2K19 um, 2K19 came out, or when the cover athlete was not was shown. He didn't have the title on his um, on him on the cover, but he was the cover athlete. WWE wanted to did not take the title off of AJ Styles until a month after 2K19 came out, and by that time, half the fucking fan base was not playing it anymore. If Becky Lynch is the women, is the cover athlete to NBA, I keep saying NBA because it's the same fucking company, 2K, and WWE 2K, I think I said NBA 2K up until then, but WWE 2K, if she is the cover athlete to WWE 2K, she is either going to keep both championships until November, or she's going to keep at least the Raw championship until November. Her and Seth are dating now, we all know that. WWE is not going... If she's going to lose a championship, it's going to be SmackDown, plain and simple, because Seth is on Raw. They want to keep Becky on Raw with Seth, so there you go. Fatal 4 way for the women... The Fatal 4 way for the women, Strowman versus Zayn in the main event is any... is... Balls Count Anywhere will be later on, and we have another Firefly Funhouse segment as well, and they go to commercial. Ricochet versus Baron Corbin. This match pisses me off. The bell rings and they go to back and forth. Ricochet with a drop kick early on. Corbin sends him in the corner and delivers his knees to the gut. Corbin misses in the corner and Ricochet rocks him more back and forth now. Ricochet lands on his feet off a moonsault. Ricochet with a uh, with another counter and crossbody to bring Corbin down. Ricochet with a kick and from the apron while Corbin is on the floor. Ricochet keeps on and hits a moonsault from the apron. They bring it back into the ring and Ricochet springboards in, lands on his feet. Corbin comes right back and levels Ricochet with a big clothesline. We go to commercial. Back from break, and Corbin, we're going to move up a little bit. Ricochet ends up blocking end, of, end, blocking end of days. Ricochet drops Corbin with a DDT for a close two count. Ricochet goes up to the top for a 630, but has to roll through as Corbin comes back. Ricochet rocks Corbin and dazes, dazes him on the top. Ricochet climbs up, but gets sent to the apron. Ricochet flies back up and sends Corbin to the mat. Ricochet with a standing shooting star fest for a close two count. Ricochet can't believe that. Ricochet charges and trade counters. Corbin ends up nailing the end of days for the one, two, three. Corbin, on a roll, on a roll. Don't see him running money in the bank. I don't even see Ricochet running money in the bank. Problem here. After the match, Corbin is standing tall. The, the, the heel got his um, heat going in the money in the bank. Okay, whatever. Jedi mentioned this on, on, on Twitter. Corbin stands tall. His music hits. We go to replays. Corbin tries to, he brings the ladder into the ring. To climb up, to grab the money in the bank briefcase to say, hey, I'm going to win this. Ricochet gets up, shoves him off. So, who, like, so, and like, he, like, JR put it this way. They, the bad guy wins the match, and the baby face gets, the, gets his um, heat back. Who really advanced this, the character in this segment? Neither one. This is WWE's booking logic. Have the, have the heel win. Had the babyface get his heat back immediately. Why? This is fucking stupid. Ricochet has lost two matches in the last two weeks. Last three weeks. Or four weeks. In the, in the last month, Ricochet has lost as many matches as he did in NXT. Ricochet is starting to feel less and less special every single week. Yes, he should do awesome in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And the fact that Braun Strowman is no longer in the Money in the Bank ladder match which we'll talk about in a bit, gives him a little bit more room to actually do something. We'll have to wait and see. I can see Ricochet almost damn near killing himself off of a couple matters. We'll have to wait and see on that. We see we have what happened last week between United States Champion Samoa Joe and Dominic. Rey Mysterio is backstage with Charlie Caruso. 
Ray says, Joe crossed the line by targeting his son after a loss. Um, Ray? Ray? Joe really didn't, like, I would say Joe crossed the line if Joe would have had to, if what I thought was going to happen is we were going to come back from commercial break last week and see Samoa Joe with the Kakina clutch on Dominic, who is trained to be a professional wrestler. May mention that to Cesaro here in a second, but he's trained to be a professional wrestler and would be able to sell a Kakina clutch from Samoa Joe. That would have been crossing the line. This was just Samoa Joe talking to um, Dominic and, you know, talking to him. So I don't know how he crossed the line. People, more people have done worse Worse than what Samoa, to, a fan, to somebody else's family member than what Samoa Joe did to yours. They said if Joe or anyone else has anything to say, you can send, come find him at Money in the Bank. But he says, at Money in the Bank, and then some, Cesaro interrupts and says, it was rude for Ray Mysterio to talk about Joe when he's not here. They also, like, Cesaro says, um, when, when, since when has WWE become Bring Your Kid to Work Day? And Ray says, for your information, my son is training and tra- learning the ropes on how to travel and be, and Cesaro's like, I don't care. He says, Dominic really looks more like Joe than Ray, and wonders if Ray knows Dominic is really his son, which, really, we're going down this. What? Ray attacks it, and they brawl around until officials separate them. Can somebody tell me what the end game for... Um, Dominic being here around Rey Mysterio. Is this guy going to be signed to a WWE contract? Is he signed to a WWE contract? What are they doing with Dominic? Yes, they know he's chain professional wrestler. Is he going to show up in NXT? Is he going to get a spot on the main roster? I don't know. I think that would be disrespectful to everybody in NXT who wants to work to get to the main roster. That Rey Mysterio's son is just going to jump leapfrog all over all of them. I think I would be pissed if I was somebody working down in NXT that I've been here for X amount of time, and I'm not, just because it's Ray Mysterio's son, he's up on the main roster where somebody like me would love to be there. I don't know what they're doing with Dominic, but yeah, no. Back from Great Cold leads to a video package, and I fucking hate this shit. I talked about it earlier. <sighs> video package of what Roman has done since returning from his battle with leukemia. Roman will face Elias. I'm, like I said, if you see the Roman Reigns... Um, video package on Tuesday. It was the same one they showed tonight. If you sit there and you believe half of what's shown in that, the fact that Roman is... I can't remember exactly what Cole said. I wish I really wrote that a little bit. But he, he pretty much called him, like, the defiant Roman Reigns. Like, he's, like, hyping this guy up. And they play this video package. I swear it's like Roman Reigns died. Or Roman Reigns um, came back. Like, this is... this, And it's like this match with Elias is his first match back. He wrestled at Fastlane. He wrestled at WrestleMania. He wrestled three weeks after that on fucking television, on on the WWE Network special. Why are you now treating this as like this is Roman's big heroic comeback? Are you fucking kidding me? It's fucking Elias for fuck's sake. This isn't that big of a goddamn match. Damn. Pathetic. And again, as the manipulation that WWE is like, hey, remember Undertaker versus Roman Reigns? Remember when Roman beat The Undertaker and how everybody cheered at him? Nope, because I don't fucking remember that either. I remember Roman getting booed out of the fucking building, coming to Raw the next night and had one of the most biggest heel reactions ever. You literally had t- fans telling Roman to shut the fuck up and he didn't even say anything yet. So the fact that you're going to sit there and try and manipulate the fans and say, look how beloved Roman was. Look how beloved he's been since the Shield. Look how much like love the WWE Universe had for him before he left. Please, give me a fucking break. Absolutely fucking pathetic. Cole talks about AJ Styles versus Universal Champion Seth Rollins and Money in the Bank and then sends us back to Sarah Shriver with AJ Styles. Shabba says people are under questioning AJ's method as a late. AJ says as a, the recent phenomenal forum to Rollins was meant for Baron Corbin, but he will fight when he's disrespected. AJ goes on to say this Monday, this this Monday night Rollins, and this is was Monday night Rollins till he showed up. AJ came to WWE with a huge chip on his shoulder, and it's still there. It got him the title shot on Sunday. AJ says he will walk into Money Bank as the challenger, but he will leave with the Universal Title. Should be an excellent match, and of course the only reason we're getting this match so soon, and I thought this would be a SummerSlam match probably, is because of Double or Nothing happening the next week. Oh 
I'm going to invest in the time versus Dana Brooke versus Nikki Cross. Fatal four way for three, for just quote unquote momentum going into Money in the Bank. I hate when they say, oh, this is momentum going into a pay per view. When nine times out of ten, maybe 9.5 times out of ten, you, when you're in the, in a match going into a pay per view where it's like, oh, you win this match, you get momentum. You end up losing on the pay per view. Give me a fucking break. <sighs> we get a sidebar from Naomi talking about the Money in the Bank ladder match. We get one from every one of them, practically. Dana Brooke, I swear, from this sidebar when they started showing her like video from earlier when she's talking about Money in the Bank, does she have lip injections? Does she get like um bigger lips? It just like a lot like she looks like she has bigger boobs and bigger lips. It just looks disgusting. Saying she deserves to win a month on Sunday and now is out and she also gets her sidebar and talks about how she has more experience than the other competitors on Sunday. Nikki Cross comes out replacing Alexa Bliss doing her due to her missing luggage, which is WWE's excuse for not having Alexa Bliss work too hard. Alexa Bliss will go into Money in the Bank. She'll sit on her ass, at, like lay on her ass, on the outside for 9.5, or 95.5% of the match and come in and try and do what she did last year. Pathetic. Talking about how she was reigned supreme on Sunday and reigned over the women's division. Which out comes Alexa Bliss. Um, before the match can begin, she joins the on commentary team. Now, this match was interesting because Nikki Cross, early in the show, of course, with Alexa Bliss, was this cool demeanor, cool, calm demeanor. Like, where's this Nikki Cross been? For all we know, Chris, Nikki Cross has always been this, like, crazy, unhinged character that you couldn't get a word in edgewise with him. She's back in the back just talking like everything's cool and like she's... Like she took, a, like she smoked something, like smoked a blunt or something, and kind of cal- calmed down or something. But when she gets into the match, she's like normal Nikki Cross. So like, are they doing something like what Jesse and Festus was back in the day? Only like when back in the day when it was Jesse and Festus, which was um, Luke Gallows. When the bell rang, when he, when the bell was, um, when before the match started, he was like in this comatose state. The bell rang, and he was like this. Maniacal monster would go out and kill things, kill people if he wanted to. And when the bell rang again, he'd be back to his comatose state. Only this time, it's just like when she's out, when she's in the back, she's cool, calm, collected. But when she's in front of the WWE Universe, she's going to be crazy maniacal. I have no idea. Everyone, and this, of course, was taped, so everyone was like talking about how Dana Brooke had this big, huge spot off the ladder. Well, Nikki Cross, Naomi, and Natalia were all fighting on the outside after they, after they build up this ladder. Dana Brooke climbs up and does a big, huge crossbody off of it, laying everybody out. Why would you take a spot that should be in the Money in the Bank of the ladder match and waste it on a Monday Night Raw? Not impressing. Not impressive at all. Brandy goes at how she belongs here. Cross drops Dan and Natalia drops Naomi on the floor. Cross and Natalia go into the ring, bring it back to the apron. Cross with the dra- with the purge off the side. It's the swinging the, the draping swinging net breaker, which is the purge, I think. Oh wait, is that the that's the twisting? Well, anyway, Natalia for the second vote for the pin. Nikki Cross wins after the match. Cross starts celebrating as we go to replays. Bliss heads down to the ringside to celebrate with her. Bliss and Cross roll the ladder up and slide into the ring. They stand the ladder up and under the briefcase. Cross starts climbing, but Bliss stops her. Bliss climbs up from the briefcase, poses with it on top. Bliss music plays as Cross rushes down below. I don't know what's going on between these two, but uh, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Rey Mysterio versus Cesaro. But before that, backstage Sami Zayn, who is ranting about how everyone says he doesn't stand a chance in tonight's main event. Which is just the people's projecting their own failures. Heh, <laughs> yeah. Sammy goes on and says he will figure out a way to beat Brock Sony tonight and, be, and win the Money in the Bank briefcase on Sunday. This was a good match. Cesaro vs. Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio vs. Cesaro are two of the best in WWE today and probably in a while. Good while. These two work well together. I honestly would love to see these guys wrestle for a singles title. I know I say that a lot about things, but. It'd be great to see, like, a United States Championship match, Cesaro versus Rey Mysterio. I think that would be great. 
Back from America, we get a pre-recorded comments from the United States champion Samuel Joe as Ray looks on from the ring. Joe says he doesn't cross, he didn't cross the line. Ray didn't bring his son to work. He did by bringing his son to WWE. Joe says someone has to teach Ray's son how to be a man, and Ray's unable to. Joe says he sends a warning to Ray ahead of Sunday's match. Cesaro is out after that. Bell rings and Cesaro drops Ray to start. Ray fights back, but Cesaro counters. Ray kicks Cesaro's knees out and drops him face first. Ray ends up hitting a big scissors, scissors takedown and for a pop. Cesaro catches Ray with a tilt to a backbreaker. Cesaro goes up and covers for a two count. More back and forth. Ray rocks Cesaro up from up on the shoulders. They go to the floor. Ray still on Cesaro's shoulders. Ray ends up launching Cesaro face first into the barrier after several counters. They tangle on the apron in the, on, in the floor again as the sequence ends with Cesaro doing a Cesaro swing in the into the ring bar- barrier, one side, and then he swings him to the other one. He was in, he had him in the Cesaro swing. He was, with the, he was on the corner, where the corner of the ring barrier on the way to down the ramp. He swings one side and he swings to another. Definitely looked like that hurt. Cesaro looks to the suplex Ray from an apron to the floor, but Ray counters with a knee to the head. Cesaro charges down the apron, but runs into a steel ring post, sort of first as Ray moves. Cesaro comes back in as Ray goes to the top. Cesaro charges with a big uppercut, knocking Ray down from the top. Cesaro powers up with a suplex from the apron, holding it while standing on the second turnbuckle. Cesaro follows through with a big superplex and brings Ray to the mat for a post two count. We go to commercial break. Back from break, and Cesaro rolls out through to keep control. Cesaro looks to go for a Cesaro swing, but Ray counters with a big DDT. Ray goes up and hits a seated senton and more for a two count. Ray with a strike while Cesaro is on his knees. Now Ray drops Cesaro into position for a 619, but Cesaro catches him. Cesaro goes for the Cesaro swing now. Cesaro stops Ray and nails a big uppercut, knocking, knocking him in position for a 619. Fans pop to go. goes for the Swiss one now, but Ray ducks it. Fall at the counter. Ray runs up for the corner and hits the Canadian Destroyer for another close two count. Beautiful looking spot, especially since the guy his size hitting the Canadian Destroyer. Cesaro keeps control and nails a huge uppercut for a close pin attempt. Ray blocks the neutralizer and drops Cesaro in position for the 619. Hits it. Goes the top. Splash. Cover. One, two, three. And the match of the night was won by Ray Mysterio. After the match, Ray stands tall and the music hits and we go to replace Ray Smooth as the announcers hype Sunday's pay-per-view. Definitely one of... It was the best match of the night, bar none. This show just... The fact that they had... You could have this and the Firefly Funhouse and that's about... I think 20, 30, like 40, 35 minutes, like 30 minutes of the show. With commercials, of course, and that's it. Carlson shows us recently happens between the revival and the Usos, including the shower scene. We cut backstage with Scott Rawson and Dash Wilder now. Rawson asks what kind of weird voyages films a man getting his anatomy shaved. Dash says it's a normal and, ha- <laughs> and his friend needed him, but the Usos took it too far. Rawson says the balls in your court. If they want to continue being the skid mark of, on the on skid marks on the underwear of society, then go ahead. But if they want to find out who really is the best tag team on the planet, he and Dash aren't hard to find. But the embarrassment for rival rival stops now. Yeah, and the only way the embarrassment for you stops is you sign that five year contract. The Russos were not here tonight because they're on the SmackDown LA of the European tour. That's why Roman was on Raw. Mojo was not, and the Usos on SmackDown. I fully expect to see the Usos on SmackDown tomorrow night for the Superstar for the Wild Card Rule. Just saying. We hear from Seth Rollins backstage talking to Sheriff Cyber, but we can't hear everything being said. He mentions breaking the internet earlier today, a reference to going public with girlfriend Becky Lynch on Instagram. He did. They did, and I, I'm surprised they did this, but they actually went and showed. Footage of their first encounter, AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins encounter from 13 years ago when AJ Styles and Seth Rollins, well, Tyler Black at the time, went one on one. And I believe Tyler Black's first ever match, or big important match, and he wanted to prove himself to his friends and family back then, but now it's not about proving the proving himself to his friends and family, it's proving to himself. He used to look up to AJ Styles, and now he gets the, he needs to beat him at Money in the Bank. It's time for the Firefly Funhouse segment with Bray Wyatt 
He's with most of the buzzer, Abby the Witch. Family Robin is also there besides, despite what happened, he does have a bandage over his one eye. So that's just how that goes. Wyatt says he has a secret this week. He ends up going into a... Uh, he. This this got really fucking creepy. Like, I'm sorry. If, like, if you didn't have chills, I don't know what to tell you, but this was creepy shit. Wyatt's secret this week, he ended up going to a dark teaser for the se- promo for the secret. The tease that turns dark and the front house is taking a creepy turn. Wyatt says the, the firefly is helping him, helping him warm his soul, but he still has some darkness in his head, but he knows how to, dark, to harness it and control it. Wyatt turns it back around and reveals a pretty disturbing new look, like a whore. He, he had, cl- he had the, these striped pants on, a jacket, he had this creepy ass creepy ass clown mask on oh my god eh. it was it was creepy you if you haven't seen the firefly funhouse yet you need to check it out i don't know where the fuck they're going with this but what the i i don't know this is this is this was fantastic because if you if okay if you're somebody who gets disturbed by clowns, don't check it out because the the final thing you see is him pretty much dressed up like he looked like I swear he looked like Sweet Tooth from Metal Metal what is it Metal what is that ah oh, what is that Metal what is that racing game fuck Sweet Tooth you know who Sweet Tooth is with the flaming hair um yeah he 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 looked like that without the flaming hair. Definitely interesting and very, very creepy as hell. The thing about it is, is that, like, when that was done, they went to black screen, they came back, and the the, 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 the announcers just took a second and was like, oh, what the fuck was that? They pretty much was like, had the face of what the fuck was that, and Nicole was like, moving on, like it wasn't a big deal. Are you fucking kidding me? That... WWE, they, I mean, like, they show very light in this creepy-ass thing, and then you have the announcer, the, the commentators just try and dismiss, dismiss it as fast as they can to get to what happened before. Ferris Robert is backstage with the Universal Champion again and says it's personal between he and AJ Styles. Now Rollins shows his footage from the NWA No Limits Wrestling Indie Show from, it said, it said 2006, so I'm going with 13 years ago. When they went out in a match, Ron says Sunday will be a statement match for him, not about proving anything to his friends or family, but about proving something to himself, to the fans, and AJ. That is that is it. Uh, Rollins industry, his show, and he is the backbone of the company. Ron says he did look up to AJ 15 years ago, but when the dust settles on Sunday, AJ will be looking up him, and Rollins walks off. So, definitely a good promo. I'm really surprised. Like, I don't know if Seth Rollins actually owns a copy of NWA No Limits Wrestling. Which is the show that that happened on, but damn, that's a hell of a thing to be at least show. Because usually when WWE's like, oh, this is the first time ever, they don't really want to, because when they first made this match official, this was the first time ever between Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. Recently, it's like the first time ever in WWE. I'm just glad that they showed the video footage. And of course, if you go back to, um, they had, I think it was on the WWE Network or their YouTube page. It might have been their YouTube page when they did the um, formerly known as, because Seth Rollins, a.k.a. Tyler Black, they did that one, and I'm pretty sure they had testimonial from AJ Styles on that formerly known as. And you got to, and that's where you find out for the first time that these two, that, like AJ Styles' first, I mean not AJ Styles, but Tyler Black's first big match was against Seth Rollins. False Count came out, Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn. Nine times out of ten, I can't stand False Count anywhere matches in WWE. Why? Because they start in the ring, they fight around in the um, the ba- the um, barrier, the ringside area, make go up to the stage, and they'll be back in the ring, and they'll pin them there. This was one of those times that they went every fucking where. They went up to the concourse. They went over to they they came back down to the ring after Baron Corbin got involved a little bit because this is if Braun Strowman loses he's out of money in the bank and Sami Zayn takes his spot. You figure Baron Corbin wants Braun Strowman out of that match. Okay, they come back down to the ring after we come back from a commercial break. They fight around the arena again. They head to the back, back towards the locker room area. Then Drew McIntyre gets involved. 
he starts um, trying to help Sammy. They end up going through gorilla position. They didn't film gorilla position for whatever reason. They come back out and they fight on the on the um, stage. Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre come back in and they beat the hell out of Braun Strowman. Put him through a ladder. Claymore kick. Sami Zayn pins. One, two, three. Sami Zayn is in Money in the Bank and Braun Strowman is out. Why was Braun Strowman in the match in the first place? If all you were going to do was put Sami Zayn in the match, I hope to have something on this on Unscripted this coming Saturday. But Sami Zayn is now in Money in the Bank. I will have my predictions on Thursday. No, Friday. We're going to have it Friday. Yeah, Friday. After the match, Sami Zayn tries to celebrate as he has the final spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Same as we the kids as we go to replay. Some fans are singing along with Sammy's theme, as they always do. Braun is helped to his feet after Corbin and McIntyre retreat to the back. Sammy back Sammy's back up. Braun Baron Corbin actually throws Sammy Zayn back out to the wolf. No, the big bad wolf known as Braun Strowman. He's playing with Braun trying to escape. Sammy goes up to the announce table as the announcers scatter. Braun choke slams him through the announce table for a big pop. Braun stands tall over Sammy and raises his arm as his music kicks. And fans pop. Brown goes off the air with Strowman standing tall. So far, with the Money in the Bank ladder match, though, we've had Ricochet and Braun Strowman both have to put their titles, put their um, spots on the line with one winning, Ricochet, and Braun Strowman losing. Why did not Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Andrade Cien um, Rick, um, Ale- um, Mustafa Ali, Randy Orton, why didn't, they, why, didn't, why didn't they just do qualifying matches? May I ask? Why did they not just do qualifying matches if this was what they were going to fucking do? Oh my goodness. This, this just, this company, I swear. Why would you even have Braun Strowman in the match for about three fucking weeks and go, nope, we're taking him away. If you wanted Braun Strowman in to be punished for Vince McMahon just wanting to punish him, like we know he wants to. Why not have him in the match? Why not have Baron Corbin, Drew Mac? Why not have everyone just put like take him and power bomb him through a bunch of ladders and have him just play dead this year while somebody else wins the match? Why would you even take him out of it? Do I expect Braun Strowman to not be on Money in the Bank? No, I expect him to get involved with the Money in the Bank ladder match, screwing Sami Zayn, Braun Strowman, and um, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. Why wouldn't he? Outside of Cesaro versus Rey Mysterio in the Firefly Funhouse, which, whoa, as as Bray as Bar- White would say, yowie wowie, what the fuck was that? This show sucked. I, 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 it's taped, I know that. And it's just, ugh, I, I can't even. Was it as bad as last week? Hell no. Last week was absolutely abysmal. This was a step up because at least you have something positive outside of the Firefly Funhouse with the Rey Mysterio Cesaro match. Can we get can we get matches like that as well as good storytelling? If you could have good storytelling that doesn't insult our intelligence and on like for a good portion of that, and you give us one or two matches like Rey Mysterio versus um, Cesaro, you would have a pretty decent Monday Night Raw. No, they're not going to be able to fix their problems with Monday Night Raw within a week. But if you, but one good Raw could lead to two good Raws and three good Raws and four good Raws, and then it's like, wow, they're on a good streak. But WWE just wants to do like Vince McMahon wants to do shit his way, and these ratings are probably going to drop lower than they were last week. Usually, tape shows, even if it's Chris, even if it's the UK ones, usually do pretty bad as it is. And the fact that this is a go-home show to the Bunny in the Bank pay-per-view doesn't help things. But that is your Monday Night Raw review for May 5th, 13th, 2019. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at The Front Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The Front 8 I do have another YouTube channel on getting ready to work on getting up and running called The Front Plays. Make sure to check that out in about a month or so. We should have something going up there very soon. But until then, my name is Franz, and I will see you guys later.